Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. In this episode, Andrea has a lot of unwelcome visitors. Oh yes. Which you can't get rid of. <laughs> yeah, and I've come back from the UK. Uh, brought some bronchitis with me, which uh, is why I'm sounding a bit croaky. Uh, and I'll show you what else we're going to do. Well, I'll show you later how I'm just going to prepare all these, or what I'm just going to do with them. I'm going to put my gloves on. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the operations and Ange will be filming it. Okay, so van now all loaded up. Um, just a little bit in it. So this week, as well as a lot of clucking noises, because I, well, both Nick and myself did quite a lot of work with the bees, there will be buzzing. So just a pre-warning for anybody, if you've, especially if you've got earphones on, there's going to be some buzzing. So I don't know if you can hear this, but we have a swarm. It's, uh... Wow, let's hope they find somewhere they can go. Good morning, it's just gone seven o'clock. I'm dressed up because we had a visiting swarm. Now I thought it had actually left. It had it decided to move into one of our spare um, hives that we have here in the workshop. So I'll just turn this around a minute. So last night I came out at about half ten, quarter to eleven and taped it up. Now there's a few stragglers because there's always a few that uh, don't know their night, their bedtime. So uh, so I'm going to do it. I'm just going to get the wheelbarrow, 
put that out, swing it around, out the back there. Clear these few boxes off the top, put this box in the wheelbarrow and take it out to its new place. So uh, I'm going to have to obviously do that by myself at the moment. So I'll film putting the box down, but the, this manoeuvre is going to be a bit difficult with just myself. So uh, wish me luck. Now, before I take the tape off, I'm going to cut down some foliage to put near the front of the entrance because, because I haven't moved, there's a 333 rule, but I'll explain that in a minute, but I need to disorientate the bees. So we put some foliage in front of them and that means that they have to reorientate when they come out of the hive, they're not going to just fly straight out, so here goes. not to block it completely, it's just to give them a, something to sort of work through, apparently. So. Right, just to make sure that... Right, I'm going to disappear now. Um, let's say hopefully they'll be all right here. Okay, so back in the workshop where the bees were, now there's a few stragglers, actually there's quite a few. Uh, so what I've done, we've set up what they call a nuke, which is a smaller hive in the same place as their one that they had decided to move into. Now hopefully, um, these guys will go back to that one, and then what I can do, I can take that down, shake them out, um, and just keep doing that until the, the hives, or most of these little guys have actually gone now. So, uh, so yeah, I still can't use, this as a through fair at the moment to go out, because there's quite a few bees around still. But, uh, let's say, unfortunately they did have a bit of a rude awakening this morning. But, yeah, I can only hope. So, like I said, I'll explain the 333 three, three rule, which I mentioned earlier. I'll just go out and... So the 333 three, three rule is when it comes to moving hives, because bees, um, they orientate to, to where their hive is. And by doing that, they send out, um, like, not searcher bees, but, you know, scouter bees, that's right. And um, they then sort of report back to the hive where all the good source of flowers and nectar and things like that are. Now, the 333 three, three rule is if you want to move your hive, you either move it three feet at a time to its final resting place, which 
for me would have been a bit of a, a nightmare doing that. Uh, the, the other option is you move it three miles away for three weeks. And during that time, the scouter bees that had the, the knowledge of where they used to live would have died because unfortunately bees have quite a short uh, lifespan. And then you can move it from your three mile away place to your permanent place. Now, again, that's not terribly practical. So the other option is to do what I did and hope for the best. I mean, uh, like I said, it's uh, an unexpected bonus to get some bees back and uh, hopefully um, we can keep this one going. If not, you know, it's we've I've done my best at the time. They, they just decided to move in somewhere where it wasn't terribly practical. But, um, yeah, you know, we can just sort of wait and see. We, we sort of found out that where the, the hives were originally was far too close realistically to a lot of our orange trees and hornets are very attracted to sweet stuff so hence where there's lots of fruit trees you find lots of hornets and you know it's the poor bees that suffer yeah I know all your friends are somewhere they're over there so yeah that's the the story so far of the bees so uh, we'll wait and see what are you doing there Matt with a hairdryer so this evening I'm with my brother-in-law Matthew and he's cooking some ribeye steaks Well, we're not going to cook them just yet and, and other things yeah uh, what have we got there <gasps> steak hang on so we have ribeye steaks, we have some sausages and and, and tomatoes, mushrooms and mm, wow. I'd just like to say a big thank you to my brother and sister-in-law, Amanda Shona, um, for feeding and watering me for a couple of days. Thanks, guys. And in return, I come all the way from Portugal just to prune their olive tree that we bought ages ago. Okay, so van now all loaded up. Um, just a little bit in it. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of stuff we needed. All old stuff from uh, from the shed, basically. So the van has disgorged its contents and we have lots of goodies um, here. Lots of goodies for future projects etc. Uh, like we have now a little bit of render bead so I can get on with some rendering where I needed to use that. I've got brought my kick bag over. Uh, an old um, wood turning lathe which I used to use years ago, but haven't done for a while, and lots and lots and lots of other stuff. 
So I did bring back with me from uh, the UK an essential essential ingredient for pasties. Pasties, uh, Swedes. So I'm just gonna. Sh well, I'll show you later how I'm just gonna prepare all these. What we're just gonna do with them. And I just wanted to show you just a few of the plants around here. Everything has come out to, into flower, and it's fantastic. So now, back to the sweets. <laughs> Which are, let's say, we, back in the UK or back in Cornwall, call them turnips. I have to say it like that, turnips. Turnips. Um, they are actually Swedish turnips is their yes. proper name, isn't it? Yes. And um, these are the only things that one should use for a pasty. So, no, um, unless you can't get them. Sorry? Unless, Unless you can't get them, then you can use turnip. It's yes. a very confusing subject. Yes, it's... Uh, there we go. So these, obviously they're bigger than uh, the little turnips that you get here. And they're also this orangey colour. Um, mashed Swede is one of my favourites. Yeah. But what I'm going to do with these guys, I'm going to... For now, they're going to get... Oh, I don't need the... Actually, that's all going to get peeled off. They're going to get quartered and then peeled, sliced, because we can then take them out, um, sliced and frozen, and then we can take them out as we need because we can use them to make pasties and as a special treat, we might have a little bit as mash one day. Yeah, depends if we grow any this year. Yeah, but also it's getting, you know, the weather's warming up a bit. We don't really be eating mash this time of year, but... No. Mash is still something that's very good. Mash sweet, try it guys. I know, mm. it's absolutely, with loads of butter and loads of pepper, it has to be done. So yes, it's definitely a uh, a bit of a luxury. So so I'm just cutting off the, the ends. So the skin is actually quite thick, so it's, it's probably easier to, rather than a, a peeler, it's probably easier to, to do it with a knife. So, and the old, sharp knife towards thumb but it's the sort of thing that we you get used to it after doing it for many years yeah well we'll leave you with that right and uh, like I said I'll give you I'll uh, I'll give you a shout when I've sort of got a tray done just to show you and I'm not they're not going to get blanched or anything because they're not going to be in the freezer long enough to to worry about any de degrading yeah so that's it so there we've got two trays of lovely sliced up swede. So I'm just going to pop these in the freezer. Um, I know they're fairly... Um, thickly layered. Thickly layered, yes. Okay. Not too concerned about that because they they do break up. You know, I can go like that and they'll break up and then it, that'll get stored into Ziploc bags and uh, ready to use as and when we need to. Why are they sliced? Why are they Why sliced? Why are they cubed? Ah, in a pasty, you have to have slices. It has to be layers, properly sliced. So none of this cube or mushed up malarkey it has to be a layer. So um, potato, onion, swede, meat, big lump of butter, lots of pepper. And obviously Nick's pastry. <laughs> Okay, so it's the next morning after putting the trays of swede, chopped up swede, in the freezer. Now, like I said, even though that's a thick layer, they do break away up quite easily. So I'm just going to get a couple of bags, break this lot up, and we now have some freshly prepared, chopped up swede that we can use for mainly pasties and occasional treat of mashed swede. So I say, literally. In a bag, obviously, put a label on it, and um, right on there. And uh, yeah, brilliant. So, thank you for bringing back some sweet, darling. No problem. It's, uh, yeah. Only means I gotta make the pasties, though. Mm, well, I'm very good at making pasties. Mm. 
So now that the uh, bees that you saw Andrea catch earlier have have settled in their new place ish. We lost a few hundred, but you know that's that's always going to happen. Now that they've settled, we're going to go down and um, put our bee suits on and go down and I've got a new hive here, which is all new frames. I'll show you in a minute. So they're all just plain waxed frames. Yeah, these are these ready for the bees to build on. So what we've got to do is decide where the queen has been laying in there, if she has started laying or whatever. Uh, decide which frames that look good and can stay in there. Uh, and take out the really rubbish frames because they moved into probably the worst uh, old hive that we had lying around. It was just the, the worst, they couldn't have picked the worst one. It was full of wax moth and all sorts of stuff and we hadn't had time to clean it out yet. But that's what they chose. So we're going to give them, now we've got them, we're going to try and look after them a bit. So we're going to um, take, the, excuse me, take the new hive down and do a bit of jiggling. Oh. So that's us, suits on. I'm going to put me, going to put me gloves on. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the operations and Ange will be filming it <laughs> and uh, let's see how it goes. Right, I'm going to get the smoke a bit better. Okay. I don't know what to expect, what we're going to get here. Yeah? Oh, what a mess we have. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That shouldn't have happened, should it? Sorry, guys. Well, it doesn't look too bad, this, this lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, obviously there's no lid on it, so we'll put the lid on, but... Yeah. I don't know if it's just lift up a couple of frames and let's see what it's... Yeah, I don't think we need to get too involved. Um, see what we're doing. Well, see what the frames look like. Hey, lots of bees. Yeah, and they've got honey in there. Honey there. Uh, we'll look for the queen, I suppose. Let's do this properly and start from the end because it looks all right. It looks quite clean inside. Yeah, well done, guys. Hmm. They have been busy. That shouldn't have took that one out the middle, but there you go. Well, when, I, um, when I when um, I moved this from the uh, workshop, yeah, they'd obviously done a lot of cleaning out. Anyway, there was a lot of um, sort of detritus that they kicked out the front. So um, we do need to put a landing board on the front of this one. There isn't yeah, a no. board on that, but that looks really oh well done, little bees. So what I'll do is. I'll just put that one there for a minute. Everything's on a slope, so it's not. We'll have to sort this out in a minute. But uh, to be honest, What's it like in the that's bottom? all honey. It's quite clean at this very far edge. Could do with. I think they've been, like I said, they they cleaned out an awful lot when uh, yeah, when I, I just before I moved them. So yeah, that seems okay. Right, guys. Some honey frames. Be interesting if we see any brood. I doubt it. I am looking for a queen as well. Again, with the swarm, that would have been the queen leaving and taking half the hive with her. Yep, you'd hope. You'd hope. Um, and to a certain extent, I'd sort of hope that because there's an awful lot of bees here, that... Uh, well, there's a big drone there. <coughs> you can see this one, that's a male, bigger than all the rest, see? Massive. 
And they're very quiet. Usually these Iberian bees are a bit feisty. feisty. Yes. But these guys, obviously, they're very busy and a lot of them are like gathering stuff. It's lovely weather like this. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no. I thought that was a young queen there, but it's not. Excited yeah. No, nope, can't see nothing. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what what we've got here. <laughs> oh, I am, as you know, no expert. So I'm trying to look at this side first. Is that me? No. Something different angles. Yeah, that's it. But there's no sign of any brood at all, is there? No, well, I don't, didn't think there would be. I mean, you know, it's eight. a young, it's a literally only a week or so that we've been. There's drones, though. There's another Seems drone here. here. Huh? Yeah, I know, so see better that side. Oh, this one. See, there's a drone there. there. Yeah, this one drone there. there. Yeah. Um, I can't see any signs of eggs in the bottom of any of these. Not at all, but they're all cleaned out nicely, so... Yeah, so... Well, they obviously decided they really wanted to live in this one, didn't they? Yeah, and... I'm wondering whether, I don't know, they're cleaning them out a lot. I can't see any eggs in the bottom of anywhere and obviously no sir. Ah, there we go. There's a queen, a young queen. Oh, brilliant. No. Yeah. Right, make sure she stays. Yeah, she's really young. So, I don't know how that works because she's very small. Well, she's obviously uh, just starting out. So yeah, we put that back in quickly once I saw that because what we don't want to do is use, lose a queen. No, especially because this and is looking really healthy and active. They're doing a really good job in there. Yeah. So we'll just give them a new, we'll put the kickboard on the front, or the landing board I should say on the front. Got a stone jammed in here. Like. Yeah. And I'll um, remove <coughs> bits of, like I said, I put the yeah. Leaves in well, front. it's difficult when you've got nothing, no one to help you and all that stuff. Well, the thing is, they, that, that's something well. I sort of read that that sort of disorientates them when they then come out of the hive. Yeah. Um, so that they have to then reorientate to where they are uh -huh. rather than just let them fly straight out. So I think they're now pretty. I'll just gently knock that down. Well, that's what they don't. Oh, well, <sighs> I'm nearly fall down the ravine myself. <laughs> um, oh, that's really good news. This is a bit of a mess, yeah. Oh, guys. <coughs> right, we're trying to square this up, eh? Yeah. Put a landing board on for him. Because these are the old blocks that were here, so none of them are actually square either. Come on, you guys. <laughs> <coughs> Come on. Thank you. Trying to do, but that's going back now. What's that like? That's going back to me, that looks like it is.
heavy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a heavy hive. That slightly angled, but... A lot better, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Fun, yeah. I'll put this back up just in case I recognise it. Or? Yeah. There we go. I do. Um. <laughs> well, we've got ourselves a beehive, darling. Yes, it would seem that way. What, they don't have here is shade? No. Uh, maybe. Hottest part of the day is going to be here. Maybe I can rig something up. Yeah. Between these trees and stuff, maybe. Yeah, if we perhaps tie something up to, you know, between these trees and down here or something. Yeah. So, I mean, we were planning <coughs> future bees here, but we would have liked to have had a bit of warning bees. Yes. So, anyway, well done, darling. Cool. Very uh, big surprise. Uh, really chuffed it. It all looked good. We put a little queen in there. So we got everything. Um, we're back beekeeping again. Yay! And train spotting. <laughs> Is it going to poop poop? No, it's a quiet one. Right, just so you know, for your information purposes, I have here coming from our pond at the top a 75 mil or three inch pipe. And the overflow is a 63 mil. That's the way the sizes work. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because they're the closest millimetre to inches, to be honest. Oh, now I'm tangled in brambles. <laughs> Sorry. Right, so I'm going to... Uh, so this, this object here, as you see, 75 mil, is a saddle. Yeah, so what happens is you bolt this on the 75 mil pipe. Uh, which Andrew will be doing while I go and get some more pipe. So that the, that bit on the back, Ange. Yep. Like so. So in this section here, there's a rubber seal, which goes against the pipe like that. Sits in here, like so. Whoops, come on. Shall I do it? It's hard doing it one-handed, isn't yes. it? Anyway, it sits in there. Oh. So when you bolt this to the pipe, then you can then drill through the centre live, this isn't under pressure, so I'll be doing it live. Uh, and then put a tap fitting on it. And you've got a tap coming off there. I'll just get that right. There we go. <laughs> Boris, what are you doing? Anyway, so I've got the tap. Now, the extra bit of pipe and the tap attached to the piece we need to shove in the hole. The only thing, and that Andrew's uh, done this up tight. So the only thing we've got to do now is... Take a drill and make a hole. This will be fun. I'm going to film this bit and stand back because... <laughs> it shouldn't be that much pressure. We've got about a metre ahead yeah. to this point. Is <laughs> your famous last words? Right, now the fun starts. And that's the idea, is to fill up the duck pond. Hey, look, not too wet. That's not too bad, Perfect. darling. Well done. And fill it up quickly as well. All doing really well. Mum's lost a bit of weight, obviously, and she's looking good as well. So... She's lost her baby weight. She's lost her baby weight, yeah. Cool. So, another thing that's grown, as you can see, are the piglets and now they're eating their own food morning and evening ants yeah? yeah and uh, yes growing huge well Cindy's over there she, she will what you have to watch in minutes she'll run over and try and uh, pinch some of their food and just to chase them off 
It's hilarious. So we're gonna have to make I'm gonna have to make a bigger bowl for him, I think. Always tastes better when you think in it. Yes. <laughs> so the morning after I got back I uh, laid a few more blocks in here yeah got this ready now I've left the front out so I can drive in with the tractor or back in with the tractor and, and fill this up yeah you could probably appreciate there's a lot of loads to go in there but it does make it so much easier to work on when you've got broccoli etc at, 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 you know knee height or well, a bit higher actually yeah. So I've just got some lovely broccoli going on here and yeah. some cauliflowers here. Yeah, which uh, we've had ants have come along. Ants and have killed your pots. Yeah, I've got a couple of them here, the little lighters, a bit, bit marble. So what we do with ants is mix a bit of uh, borax with treacle or honey. Um, probably treacle is better. And put it on a leaf or something on the ground. And the ants take it back to the nest and they don't come back. We'll get, get that one. We'll bring that one in. Put this weird Romanesco type cauliflower thingy. Mustard now gone to seed. Garlic. Looks like it's doing alright. Onions? Is this onion sand? Or what? Oh, leeks. Oh, actually, yeah, it does look a bit leaky. Yeah, well done. And shallots. shallots. That's shallot. Shallots. So we've also got, what's that? Polenta corn. Polenta Thank you, corn in here, French beans along the back. Broad beans here. And obviously our onions and garlic here, along with some cabbages. So we're using these cabbages. Doves are giving it help. <laughs> so these cabbages, as we use them up, we'll refresh the bed, and uh, we'll be planting Hokkaido pumpkins in there. Well, I think I'll do actually. I'll probably harvest these and do similar with the swede. Just chop them all up and freeze it. Then you know, in slices, so that we can just grab handful as we need it. So because uh, they're getting a couple of them are starting Going to go to seed, seed yeah. now. So yeah, this one. So I can do that. Take off the any of the outer leaves, which will be treat for Cindy and the piglets and uh, just get in and get these into the, the freezer so we can refurb this bed and like Nick said put there's some Hokkaido in there because it appreciates the water. So that's all from us uh, this week. Mr Crokey. <laughs> yeah hopefully next week uh, I won't be as croaky. We have Sandra and Raymond are coming tonight so um, they'll be featuring in our video we'll get them working yep. in our videos Plenty of next week to do. and uh, we'll see you in the next one but before we go don't forget to like and subscribe hang on, hang on, hang on. subscribe and don't forget to ring that little notification bell ding ding and we'll see you in the next one bye guys cheers